Yeah, I think uh, I just read somewhere uh, saying that you know there is a politician who triggered you to uh, do your PhD or the way they think. So, uh, was he? Oh, how was he the trigger for your work on design thinking? Because he exactly said it's not. Uh, I mean, I, I probably want to hear it from you. Uh, how was he a trigger for your work? <laughs> you you prepared well, Kiran, and uh, <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> He uh, and and uh, and this 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 may be a little bit of um, uh, embarrassing actually what I'm going to explain right now because uh, here we see again the Western world uh, in in this uh, in this answer. I think it was 2000. It was before my PhD and I was already thinking about it. But I was listening to this guy in a lecture in a uh, in a large uh, uh, theater, and he was giving an excellent uh, talk about the difficulties of what politicians face. And he, by then, was uh, state, uh, I, I don't know what how to explain that in English. It's not the minister, but one step below that for developing uh, countries, for uh, supporting developing countries. And he gave the example that if we want children in India, this is the embarrassing part, oh. <laughs> give the exact same opportunities, lifestyle and wealth as we give to the children in the Netherlands, the world would go bankrupt and, and die from carbon dioxide and, uh, and, and energy problems and all these things because the footprint is too large. We cannot do that. We have to find other ways. Now I'm already framing it as a design thinker. We have to find other ways. He was just saying it's a dilemma. We have to choose between two evil things. Okay. And that's the politician side. So we're going to have discussions. He explained, we're going to have stakeholders. We're going to involve people from India. We're going to involve people from the Netherlands. And then we make a decision. And I was like, uh, is there a third option? Can't we actually come up with new ideas rather than just this dilemma from this is bad and this is bad. Now, what do we choose? Can we find new ways, new things? And the funny thing was, that was the moment I discovered I was thinking differently as a design thinker. Because in the entire audience, people were looking at me like, you're very naive, aren't you? And I was like, if I'm naive, I'd rather be naive and optimistic and trying to move things forward rather than make this terrible decision that we are making right now. And it was actually, indeed, I got it. I, I said before in this, uh, in this meeting, I got angry and that's why I, I, I started a PhD. This was the moment I got angry. I was really like, uh, if I talk with IT guys, we always think like, okay, so we have a problem A and B, it's not going to work. Let's think about option C. That's the way how R&D people think, how IT people think. They think in, let's create something new. Let's create new possibilities. Maybe we fail, but at least let's give it a try. And now I was suddenly talking to politicians who said, no, it's A and B, choice, choose. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think... Um... <laughs> So you wanted to solve such big, hairy, wicked problems, as you said, uh, <clears throat> if you were to... That, that one is really big, eh? <laughs> okay, okay, that was too big. <laughs> no, but, but to be honest, uh, nowadays, as, as a professor, but this is 15 years later, in Amsterdam, we are uh, having urban living labs on, on not this kind of big problems, but for instance, on over-tourism, because Amer uh, Amsterdam is flooding with, with tourists, and we have a lot of social exclusion because prices go sky high of living eating, uh, stuff like that. So the original people actually are moving out of the city center just for the tourists and stuff okay. like that. So okay. that's that's a smaller social problem, but still it's a social problem. And, and that's where I'm now working on with students and, and other uh, lecturers on these kind of wicked problems. Oh, okay, okay. So what was your uh, thought process uh, if you were to, uh, like, as you said, uh, let us look at the possibilities. So did you want to crowdsource the whole problem or you want to involve, uh, you know, socio-political interaction and industry interaction to solve that? So what exactly was your uh, uh, brainchild when you said this politician is probably on the wrong side? Uh, he is uh, talking of you know cutting down the population or something like. So, what was your uh, uh, thought process in terms of uh, you know uh, solving that uh, big hairy wicked problem? So, if you were to solve that's, it that's today, a very big one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, if you were to solve it today, how do you do it differently with all your knowledge and your experience uh, uh, given to it? Well, the thing is, the thing is, there is not one single brain that can actually solve these kind of things. Correct, correct, correct. So, so uh, basically, so the process. Exactly. So what we have to do is we have to uh, develop a co-creation process, a participatory process in, in which we invite many different uh, stakeholders 
And, and this is the part which I believe is very often missing in these modern uh, participatory uh, uh, co-creation sessions. What we have in the Netherlands, for instance, what you see, and this is, this is the wrong way, eh? I'm just saying it, that we invite everyone over, then we have this big circle of people sitting all around and they're going to have a discussion. Okay. And that's, I'm against, I'm in favor, and why are you, and, and, and we just have this dialogue, which is important, but no new possibilities. No one is envisioning what could be done also. And, and what I say is, so next to this, this, this learning community, you also need creative people with some time and who are listening there who can actually use the creative skills even on the spot to come up with different ideas, with different frames. That's a typical word I'm using, different ways of looking at things, but also give some time to develop more alternative frames and present it again into the group. So you need to have people who can think literally outside the box, make them explore it, making it very visible. It's about imagining things, not because they know what the answer is, but because they can offer other frames, other ideas to people so that they can think and reflect on it. How can people know what they want unless they see what might be possible? What might yeah. be possible?